Good evening. Preparing for my presentation, I understood that all news and traditional news are as follows. Uh, so they will tell about also modifying agents, skin toxicity. It became not clear what sort of news I would share with you. But we are living in an interesting period when everything is changing. What is changing? Our notion on uh, follow-up uh, treatment or neoadjuvant uh, therapy is changing. Uh, there are wide indications, aggressiveness and duration of adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy uh, have extended. There are more old patients. No one would administer near advanced therapy for a 70-year-old woman 10 years ago. And the goal of uh, um, therapy at adjuvant near advanced therapy is to decrease the probability of late complications. We hope that our patient will live long and he shouldn't live until late complications. There is a journal, Russian uh, dis disabled person. So it seems that the person has gone to war and come back to it. Now, therapy of disseminated cancer. The number of therapy lines has increased. The patient who has received five lines of therapy uh, is not unusual. Uh, duration, total duration of therapy has increased. 20, 25 cycles of therapy are received by many patients. We have clear-cut uh, psychology of therapy. We know the disseminated process cannot be treated. That means that life of a person on long chemotherapy is his only life. No other life will be offered for such patients. In 2008, when Italian marathon runner fell uh, down before the finish and the judges did not count his marathon, famous words were said. It's not the victory, but participation, which is important. So life of the patient on the background of chemotherapy has to be in such a way that it should be life. We have to forget the idea that now we will fight and then it will come to us. But the life of our patient has to be interesting right here and right now. Patient continues to live during chemotherapy. This is his precious uh, period of life. He may be in love. His children might be born, sometimes grandchildren. Recently, our young girl went for delivery right from chemotherapy. So they live, they work, they quarrel. They, so they have this full-blooded life. And it has become very interesting to me uh, whether, what about the news? There is no um, news in anemia therapy. Nothing has changed. and. Uh, soon we're going to have a uh, mask uh, congress in San Francisco. What will this conference be devoted to? We see a lot of sessions devoted to sexual life of oncological patients. So I looked that uh, so during recent six years, it has been for the first time that they would discuss it in details. We are very close to that. Um, so I hope that next year the news will be shared with you. But what do we have now? Sexual health of oncological patients is becoming more vital. And just look, our colleagues that deal with sexual health of healthy people broke uh, this item into components such as physical and psychological elements. Sexual dysfunction of oncological patients uh, is related simultaneously to many causes. Surgery, radiotherapy, 
chemotherapy, hormone therapy, and rate of sexual dysfunction depends on the type of oncology and type of therapy. And interference, doctoral interference, to decrease manifestations of dysfunction depends on the type of cancer. For example, hormone substitute therapy is contraindicated in hormone sensitive tumors. We would like to eliminate some symptoms, so we even know how, but we are not able to do it. So chemotherapy and sexual dysfunction very often um, nausea, fatigue, uh, weakness uh, uh, trigger sexual dysfunction in men and women, but we tend to forget that such uh, anti-medic, analgetic, and antidepressant uh, uh, decrease uh, libido and alopecia uh, decreases self-assessment. Though recently our male patient bought uh, female wig and uh, then brought it to the hairdressers and they cut this wig. For him it was most critical. Uh, ovarian suppression, according to research of soft and text uh, studies, um, which is highly promoted in a given therapy, changes women's life, especially young women's life under 40. We make our women older, 15 or 20 years. Vasomotor motor symptoms, sleep disorders, dryness of vagina, incontinence, changes in the mood, changing hair and skin, weight gain, uh, inability to have orgasm in young women with ovarian suppression is a very negative manifestation of the and the and consequences of anti-tumor therapy. What kind of barriers are faced by clinicists? We are mainly focused on other issues. We are interested in the number of neutrophils, level of hemoglobin, liver tests, uh, general uh, condition. So we neglect this issue. The second problem is uh, lack of preparedness. We are not prepared. We are not taught to solve sexual problems with patients. Third problem is psychological discomfort. It's not always that it's comfortable for a doctor uh, uh, to discuss these problems. Not everyone is ready to discuss these problems with uh, patients of the same gender or opposite gender. Uh, so there are barriers, anxiety, confusion, age, culture. It's not clear when. It's good uh, when doctor is younger or older and religious uh, aspects are important. Not all people out of uh, their religious uh, convictions uh, are ready to discuss sexual issues with the doctor. Perception of sexual issues is a non-medical problem having no relation to treatment. Ignorance and misunderstanding of uh, treatment options, uh, plus a patent to do that uh, for out of insurance budget, is also an important component. Comorbidity. We have patients with cardiovascular disorders, diabetes, endocrine pathologies, depression, uh, poor way of life. Our patients smoke, use uh, alcohol, they have psychological problems, everything, uh, well, except for oncological issues, it can also affect sexual dysfunction. There was a trial which showed that uh, during adjuvant therapy with aromatase inhibitors and tamoxifen, within the first three months, there is a manifested disorder of those uh, side effects that result in sexual dysfunction, such as uh, vaginal dryness, loss of sexual interest. On colleges, so in the trial that was published in 2011 show uh, that black stripes showing that oncologists do not discuss sexual problems with their patients. 
recommendations of NCCN give quite a clear cut advice how to discuss that with patients first. During the visit, ask about sexual function, and then there is an important point where the patient uh, um, is ready to discuss this issue or not. These two upper parts show that patients refuse to discuss these issues. So making these recommendations, they understood that not every patient would agree. If he, a patient does agree, then there is a question. So look, there is a doctor, he is an oncologist, he has other problems. So besides that, it is proposed to assess the influence of therapy on sexual function, influence of real suppression or androgenic deprivation, comorbidity, we can test level of testosterone and drugs, whether the influence or do not influence uh, sexual function. So actually, it's the, the second visit. So the question uh, being used in women to assess sexual dysfunction, the main question is, do you want to talk about it with the doctor? The patient may refuse to answer this question. And in case we work with women, we have to find out. We have to find out if she has any pains during sexual intercourse, lack of orgasm, any manifestations of depression. And look, uh, in the end, there, are, there is advice on how to deal with this. And uh, it says that uh, it's better to um, send the patient to other specialists, to gynecologists, to psychologists or other professionals. The transformations of uh, vagina uh, happen because of uh, changes in vaginal secretion and pH um, of vagina that is associated with vaginitis and changes in flora. So our patients suffer of it. In a randomized study, it was done a comparison of estradiol with uh, creotestosterone. Why testosterone? Because uh, a, a patient with uh, breast cancer can be administered estradiol, so it's equally effective. Uh, so now, this uh, first, uh, first female Viagra, so-called, is widely discussed. And uh, it, this causes a lot of uh, side effects. Uh, it uh, implies long, um, long treatment, and uh, it may even cause um, a faint, fainting. So this uh, was recommended, but not to everyone. As for sexual dysfunction in males, there is a questionnaire that uh, the same uh, as at andrologist uh, visit. Erectile f f dysfunction is also a very serious issue. The uh, frequency of erectile dysfunction after prostatectomy is uh, equal up to 50 uh, up to 12 percent, which is uh, a lot. So when we talk to male patients, we uh, have to discuss with them we, with this question, but a female doctor may want to skip this question, uh, his erectile dysfunction, lack of libido, um, problems with orgasm and depression. Therefore, we should send this patient to other specialists such as urologists, psychologists, and so on. Two, a couple of words about uh, skin toxicity. Look at the patient. This is uh, an illustration from a Greek study uh, saying that new types of therapies cause new types of uh, skin toxicity. 
this is a, a pigmentation, complete lack of pigmentation. But after the, after canceling the uh, medication, pigmentation uh, came back. Then correction of uh, dermatological toxicity uh, is a topic that's. Uh, that is uh, widely discussed uh, in uh, the Society of Dermatologists. And we had um, recently a um, round table uh, and on Ruska website there is a um, there is a list of actions advice for a patient. There is no name there are no names of uh, medications but there is a list of very simple rules um, that can help patients with uh, GFR inhibitors. In the end, there are lines that can be used by a doctor prescribing certain medications. So this list of actions includes prescription of medications. You can find it on the website. As for palm feed syndrome, special uh, urea containing creams are advised in this case, and clinical studies showed a high effectiveness of this uh, creams. As for pyridoxine supplements, their eff effect was not proven, and uh, there is uh, no indication of this medication uh, to fight hand food syndrome. Pizza. So we are getting more and more data about uh, the use of this uh, cold uh, Korea helmets, but um, a tra a head trauma is uh, possible in this case, so we need to consider this as well. We are getting the experience in this area, but uh, it's not 100% effective uh, tool. As for paranikia in patients, taking inhibitors uh, for a long time. There was a long, um, big study showing that uh, topical beta blockers that is used in uh, cases of chemangiomas in children shows a beneficial effect in uh, paranikia. This is the um, mm, this is an illustration from this uh, study that shows a visible uh, effect. Usually, a patient suffer from such problems for months. Another case, a prepitant uh, was effective in severe itching and. This is a very necessary and beneficial uh, thing, and uh, it was uh, mentioned in German recommendations. A propitan can be used and added to standard therapies, uh, and um, in parentheses it uh, said that it is off-named, which is a rare case. 91% uh, of effectiveness uh, show us show us in in smaller research. We see that not just itching but also rushes disappear because of this medication. A group researching uh, dermal toxicity, MA, M A W S C and they recommend to use antiperspirants in uh, radiotherapy, radiation therapy in breast cancers. 
Usually, um, patients suffer from problems in axillus, but uh, this effects effects can be avoided. As for cardiovascular diseases, our females suffer from it quite often nowadays. Comorbidity is a, a big issue, and we shouldn't hope that we'll get a healthy patient. Um, it's very rare. A ventricular arrhythmia happens in males and females uh, uh, with different frequency. Women of all the age, more than 60 years old, um, they usually suffer from arrhythmias. Then prolongation of QT, targeted medication causes this, and dehydration uh, because of uh, cancer therapy together with um, elect electrolyte disbalance and uh, dysfunction of uh, renals, etc. An analysis of 24,340 patients showed the risk was studied and uh, 8 percent, more than 8 percent of patients uh, had a risk of uh, prolonged QT. Uh, so we have to be ready that the number of patients who uh, suffer from this uh, rhythm disturbances will increase. The German study shows that 40 percent of breast cancer patients had a risk of QT uh, prolongation and uh, and it uh, hasn't been uh, mentioned by oncologists before. All the medications are listed on our website. Accumulation risk of cardiac uh, disturbances in early breast cancer patients receiving adjuvant therapy was, were also stu studied. And there are three main factors, diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, obesity, and CAD. If there are three, at least three factors uh, present, then uh, during the adjuvant therapy, we'll get an increased risk of complications. So recommendations uh, were not changed uh, much uh, during the past uh, year, but uh, the main direction of research nowadays is um, the insurance of normal life of an onca patient, and uh, we need to form a multidisciplinary team to uh, ensure that.